Lord's a good one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I invite the brethren to stand up. We are going to open our Bibles in the book of Mark. Mark um, chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 1 onwards. Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 1. My brethren, the best thing for a church is a moment like this. Because there, there is sincerity in the prayer of the child. Because from them is the kingdom of heaven. Everything that they do in the name of Jesus, the Father will answer. Amen. That's why the prayers, they have to be done with sincerity. Like the children, without any self-interest. Because the Lord listens especially if the prayer is directed to the Father. And that's how Jesus talked. That's why it's a great blessing to be here tonight, because we have been a target of the prayer of our, ch of our children. And the Lord has answered those prayers. Mark 8, on one says the following. In those days, the multitude, being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have a compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own homes, they will faint on the way. For some of them have come from afar. Amen. The church may be seated.
Amen. Glory to God. My brethren, what we want the most is that this Maranatha may be fulfilled. And Maranatha for us is not simply the name of a church, the name of institution. No. Maranatha for us is a prophecy. It's come Lord Jesus. It's a plea. It's a desire. It's something that is in our hearts. Because we know very well that when this will this takes place is we will leave this world we will depart forever and we will be in an eternity in the presence of our God that's why our praise our focus is to get ready for this day and it was it was for this day for this that Jesus came to the world to prepare man, to prepare humanity, to meet with him. Because if it was not for this, we, there would not be any other objective, the coming of Jesus to the world. And when Jesus came to the world, he came with a mission. And his mission was to show to man, introduce to man, the fact that he can, man can have fellowship with God, and that man can turn to God, and that man can have once again intimacy with God, what was lost because of sin and disobedience, man lost their closeness, their fellowship with God. And Jesus, when he came to the world doing his earthly ministry, Jesus met the nation of Israel like the nation of Israel has always been. A nation that was persecuted, a nation that suffered, a nation that always was a target of uh, the gaze of the enemy of our souls and throughout the history of Israel and it it's, has repeated those trials, the battles, the suffering when Jesus came Israel was under the control of the Roman Empire the Roman Empire uh, control the, the known world and most importantly Israel and the people lived in desperation and anguish because once again Israel was uh, being subdued Israel always have been waiting for a Messiah the one that was going to save Israel the one who was going to take deliver the people from and give people uh, um, political freedom to be like the other nations and Jesus now comes to show to Israel that none of this has any worth it would not be a political freedom or a theological freedom or a material freedom that would fulfill the hearts of the the emptiness the people had, the absence of God. And through whatever Jesus, Jesus passed by because of his message, because the, nation, the mission that he has taken up with the Father, whatever he passed by, people would follow Jesus. And 2,000 years passed, and people to this day, they continue following Jesus the only name that attracts multitudes, the only name that attracts people, because we know that there is no other resource in this world that may do what Jesus does for man. With all of this that we see in 2019, with all this technology and all the advances, the medicine, the internet, computers, None of this can substitute what is so simple, 
which is the presence of God in man's heart. That's why today we live in a world in which people continue seeking something to fill this emptiness. They run all over the place, seeking fame, they seek money, they seek everything to satisfy, to try to satisfy, to fill this void. But Jesus, we know, the church knows. Jesus is the only one, has always been and will always be. There is not going to be another one. There is no other name that is greater than the name of Jesus. Here he says, Mark here describes an experience that was lived that he witnessed. Jesus was there for a few days. How many days that we see here? How many days? Jesus was preaching? Three days. During three days, Jesus was preaching to the crowd and he didn't forget. The disciples had forgotten, but Jesus, he notices that the people were tired, they were still anguished, a few, a few of them sick, and now he tells, we need to feed those people. We cannot leave this place still hungry. Otherwise, they will just faint on their way back. They're not going to be able to, to reach their homes. If we send those people away, they are not going to be able to ar arrive to the place they are, they are supposed to. And my brethren, as we gather here tonight, a small multitude, we are almost 100 people here. And Jesus knows each one of us. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what I need. And that's why we're here. Because we are needy people. We have necessities. We are people that understand that we know that there is no other place for us other than in the house of our, of our Father. And Jesus can is the only one who can satisfy. Many times the disciples here they didn't realize what the multitude needed. And Jesus says, I have compassion on the multitude. Because it's been three days uh, since they ate. They're, they are with me for three days and have nothing to eat. And the disciples still did not understand what Jesus was saying. And now, Jesus knew what they needed. The disciples have had no resources. They did not even have enough for them. Even more, feeding a, great, a large crowd in a blink of an eye. How would they be able to find a location where they would be able to purchase even with all the money they might have? Where the, would they be able to buy food, bread, a meal to satisfy the large crowd. But they needed a miracle. And the miracle only Jesus can do. And that's why we're here tonight. We do not depend on men. We do not depend on anything. But we depend on only one thing from God, of a miracle from God. We live off of a miracle. The church that goes back to the presence of the Father, the church that is always kneeling down in the presence of the Lord, the church needs, that church needs a miracle. And that's why we seek in prayer the help from the Lord. Three days. They are with me for three days. For how long have you been with, with Jesus? How long has it been since you became a Christian? How long has it been since you accepted Jesus? A few, a couple of years, 
a few for 30, 40 years, a few for just a few months. But there is something that is important. Jesus knows all the seconds that you stayed in God's presence and everything that happened in your spiritual life, everything that happened in your life ever since you accepted Jesus is registered in eternity. Nothing is forgotten. All your prayers, all, all your dedication to the Lord, every moment in which you overcame evil, every time you overcame the flesh, every time you alone with the Lord, you were victorious in your battles. They are registered in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord knows all of them. And He knows exactly what you need. And every time that we go to meet with Jesus, we never go away hungry. Never, never. Every time you go to speak with the Lord, every time to, to get to the altar of the Lord, with your necessity, with your doubt, you will not leave this place. You will not leave the presence of the Father in the same way you entered. That was the greatest concern of Jesus. They cannot leave. If they leave hungry, they will faint on the way back home. And Jesus says that, that, that because many came from afar, many came from afar. My brethren, our spiritual life, our walk with Jesus is a long walk. Many are coming from afar. Many come from very far away from Jesus, sunk in, in drugs, in addictions, sunk in the sin. Many are coming from far away because the more man is, the farther man is from God, more man is involved with this world. You want to know if a person is well spiritually, is when the person is running away from the Lord. Because the farther you are from God, more turn to the world that person is. But we have a walk, a journey. And Jesus said that in the house of the Father, there are many dwellings. And Jesus knows where we are going to. He knows where you need to go to. You're not going to go simply to go back to your house. You're not going to go back simply to the place where you came from. But from the day you began to meet with Jesus, you began to stay with Jesus, He has a dwelling for you. And this dwelling is in heaven. This dwelling is in the kingdom of, of God. And there we, are, we have our address. Each one of us has their own house, their location. We have not been forsaken. And that's why Jesus says they need to be fed, otherwise they will faint on their way back. My brethren, what feeds man, what feeds man's soul is nothing from this world, but they are the words from God. There are two things that God has introduced here, the bread and the fish. The bread representing the word of Jesus, the bread representing the doctrine of, from the Father, and the fish representing the church. Isn't it true? The place where man is fished out, where man is brought out, where man was taken away from the world, from the mud of the sin and brought here. Because here in this environment, is where God has been taking care of us. It is in this environment that God has seen our suffering, our pains. It is here in the presence of the Father, in the house of the Father, there is plenty of bread. In the same way that Israel, to this day, to our days, Israel goes, goes through its battles, and we heard from yesterday, how many missiles have been thrown uh, against Israel? It is a millionaire war. It never ends. 
And do you know why? Because Israel is important to God. Israel is precious to God. And the more you are precious to God, you also become important to the enemy of our souls. The more you are important for God, you become a greater target to the enemy because God, the enemy wants to steal this from, from God. The enemy came to kill, steal and destroy it, and you want to cut off once for all your intimacy with God. But Jesus came to the world to give us the food. Jesus came to the world to put us on this path that will lead us to eternity. And it is in this path, it is in Jesus, being fed by Him, having all the care from the Holy Spirit, having everything that the Father has given us, all the resources from eternity. There is, these are moments like this. Moments in which you went into the house of the Lord, anguished, sad, uh, going through suffering. Here is where the song is sang, when the child prays, when the church gathers in fellowship, and then the Holy Spirit takes his place. The Holy Spirit flows, and now the Holy Spirit begins to bring comfort, and removing anguish, suffering, and pain. And now the Holy Spirit begins to feed us. And now He begins to give us the assurance that we are no longer on a path that will we have no end. We are not on, going on the wrong direction. We are not going to faint on the way. We are not going to stop in the way. Because the church of the Lord, the church that the Holy Spirit is uh, taking care of, the church that the Holy Spirit is working in their heart, is a church that will be victorious. Is the church that will arrive in their dwellings. And it is the church that will come into eternity. It is the church that will be taken away. And you can become part of this church. You can tonight. I don't know how you are. I don't know how you entered here. Surely you have your trials, your doubts, your uncertainty, uncertainties. But tonight the Lord wants to transform them. The Lord wants you to have the, the certainty that you are on the path and you are not going to faint on this path. It's not going to be the tiredness of this life. It's not going to be discouragement or lack of faith or any that the man may place on your path that will hinder you from meeting with Jesus because it is greater than man. Greater than man is our Jesus that died on that cross of Calvary. And on the third day, he resurrected. And because of this that he says, they have been with me for three days. This three days here is not just a coincidence. Three days speaks exactly what Jesus was going to go through. Three days speaks exactly of what you have already gone through. What we have gone through, which was the death and resurrection of Jesus. We have been with Jesus now for three days because we have already gotten out of history here and now leaving the prophetic and everything that Jesus does is prophetic his entire ministry is prophetic a, a healing, a message gaze of Jesus the tears of Jesus the miracle that he performs and even when Jesus is waiting is prophetic everything that he does is prophetic that's why for us tonight it's a great joy to be here because we know that we have been for three days with Jesus. We have already overcome that first phase, which is the death of Jesus. And now he is the victorious one. He is the one who wins, won the, uh, the greatest victory for us because he overcame death for us. And today we can give a shout of victory. Today we can say, Lord, I glorify you because your word has been enough for me. Your word has given me a direction and to be in fellowship with the church, the benefit of being in fellowship with the church, all of this is important for us. 
and every day that passes by, we desire um, more and more to uh, for Jesus to return. There's no other place that we want to be other than in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus knows this in the same way that we know other people, in the same way that the disciples didn't realize what the multitude was going through. But nothing is missed by Jesus because Jesus knows us. For the moment, we open up our hearts to the Lord and we accept the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has control of our hearts and He knows each detail in our lives. Many are coming for, from very far away. But we are now close to the Lord. Many have come from afar. Because sin puts a distance between God and man. But Jesus causes us to come close to the Father once again. And you who entered here tonight, the Lord has shown through a spiritual gift people there are disturbed and people without. And there's a person that is asking that itself, saying, How, why am I so discouraged in my spiritual life? It's the lack of bread. It's because you are not being fed by Jesus. Because man, when it's not fed, man goes weaker. And in our spiritual life, when we not feed what, of what is spiritual, of what is prophetic, of what is the promise of God, when we are not under the hands of God, we are uh, we grow weaker. But tonight the Lord is giving us once again this assurance that we are not being let down and that we are not going to leave this place hungry, famished. We are not going to leave this place and die there in the world. No. We will leave this place satisfied because the grace of the Lord has been enough for us. And tonight, the grace of the Lord is being poured out upon us. Amen. And the Lord wants to visit their hearts. And while the group is going to be singing a song, you need to take possession of what God is giving you tonight. You are being away for three days with the Lord. You are already part of the Lord. You have a, a God, you have a Father that allows us to die hungry, that does not abandon. And He wants to give you the assurance that you are on the right path.
Senhor, Holy God, Lord to God. Praise the the Lord. The Lord has shown that a child entered here is closer to an adolescent. And the revelation, and through the revelation, we understood that this child is sick. But the doctors cannot do anything that would heal this child. But tonight, the Lord is he giving you a cure. The Lord is giving this child a deliverance. Amen. A miracle. It's a miracle. Only a miracle. Our children, in order for them to remain in the presence of the Lord, only a miracle. It's not a physical sickness. It's a spiritual sickness. Our children, in order to remain in the presence of the Lord, only a miracle. Only if he, Jesus takes care of them. There's no doctors, no psychiatrists, not, none of it that can heal our children, that can resolve the problem of our children. Only Jesus. But now you ask, uh, how about those who are in the world? Our children are here. The secret for our children to remain here and be saved only Jesus. Right? The Lord has shown in another vision, the Lord has shown a man that has on his hands a contract. And let me pull my glasses. This man had a contract in which if he signed, he would be compromising he, the spiritual integrity of his entire family and it is interesting that while he was uh, analyzing the contract he would not realize 
because those details are in small print. The details that would cause him to compromise his his families, it's all in small print at the bottom, no? At the bottom of the document. But Andrew tonight, he would come, would take this contract from the hands of that person and would not allow that person to sign that contract. And then the person would realize that this contract was a contract made by the enemy of our souls. My brethren, we cannot ever have an agreement with the world. There is no agreement with the world. The word says we cannot take the shape of the world. Having agreement with the world, having a contract with the world, is when we begin to take the shape of the world. And nobody realizes it. Because what is against us is in small print. At it's a footnote. You know, when a contract is very well made, whatever is, is at the footnote there, it's always against, uh, goes against whoever is signing the contract. This is a trap from the enemy. But the Lord is giving you the, the, to this man. It's a man. He's the head of the family. Sometimes we need to take a stand, make a definition in our lives and the stand is this do not sign this contract analyze it pray to the Lord and say Lord what, what is this is this for me consult the Lord oh but I don't believe in consult I don't believe in spiritual gift I don't believe in anything so if you are in a Maranatha Christian church you don't believe in spiritual gifts oh boy it's difficult you don't believe in consultation of the Bible that's complicated we need we have the benefit of the word of the Lord we have this resource, this weapon, which is the consultation to the Lord. May, you may not trust who is consulting, but then you consult at home. You or your family, seek the Lord, seek the spiritual gifts, seek to have an experience with, with spiritual gifts. Because what is, whoever is spiritual, understand what is spiritual. Whoever is spiritual, understand what is spiritual. Isn't it true? So here it is. This family. And now, so this child. And this person here. This woman. That today needs to receive from the Lord. She's very discouraged and weak. The people went to Jesus because they didn't have what to eat. And they left fed. And you who are entering tonight before the house of the Father, the house of the bread, or as the plenty of bread, where there is plenty of blessing, take advantage of it. Don't leave this place with a hardened heart. Open up your heart and allow Jesus to enter. Amen. Let us stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise you. Because we're privileged people. Because we serve the only God who is whole, holy three times. We're serving the only God who is the Lord of Lords. You serve the only God who is sovereign. That's why you are everything for our lives, Lord. Because you are the great I am. We praise you because the way you talk to us. We praise you because... Soon, our not is we fulfilled. We praise for your grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God.
Glory to God. Lord, may your word remain in their hearts here. Lord, we pray that your spirit may operate healings, deliverances, transformations. Lord, we ask that we may see salvation in your house. Take us home in peace, Lord. We praise you because we're going to leave this place fed. We're going to leave this place strengthened. And we will face the battles and the trials, Lord, with our hands held high. Because with our head held high. Because we know that we are not alone. And because you have been going ahead of us and giving us the victories. Take us home in peace is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, we pour out upon all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. Amen. If anybody desires uh, prayer and assistance, we are here at your disposal. Ask the brethren to, to pray. To, this is the month of the pastors, the families. So from tomorrow onwards, we're going to be praying and having fasting, early dawns, noon. Everybody has already received the topics. So let us pray so that the Lord may be operating on the life of the pastors. Amen. I've been four weeks with a sickness, a cold that never goes away. I asked that run to pray. Today I took a medication because I was so sick. It was a tea. I know that, that now I know why my parents would give me a bad medication because the, the medication that tastes bad is the, the good one. Amen. So we ask that you may take out the life of the pastors and their homes. Amen. Peace of the Lord.